How much money are MPs earning? Over £17 million. In the course of this parliament, just three years. And who is giving the cash that funds their campaigns? Two individuals in there who shut the door when we ask more questions. These are surprisingly difficult questions in our political system, and the answers aren't always what the voters want to hear. Oh my God, that's a lot of money. MPs should be doing their, doing their job and not getting involved in all these other things. What needs to change, and are the people in power listening? This year, Sky News has been tracing the flow of money through our political system. We've investigated second jobs, donations and the groups that exist in the margins of Westminster. And with our partners, Tortoise Media created a tool that allows you to follow the money. This month, we revealed the scale of MPs' commitment to their second jobs and the familiar faces earning big money. The Westminster Accounts Project is about showing the public about the overlap of money and politics. And it's triggered calls for change from across the political spectrum. But few have the power to put this subject on the agenda of government. Lord Evans is the most senior ethics watchdog in the country, directly advising the Prime Minister. Do you think from everything you know at the moment there are some MPs for whom the focus isn't clearly on their constituents. There have been some quite well-documented cases where it's hard to argue that this person is putting their main focus on their parliamentary duties given the amount of time that they appear to be giving to other activities. But at the moment we don't have any sense of what's reasonable and uh, we have some transparency, but do you think that goes far enough? I think the transparency isn't bad and it's helped by the sort of work that, uh, that Sky has done uh, on the database and the tool. I think that's very valuable because one of the recommendations we made in the past is that the material needs to be easier to search and more accessible and I'm told that's going to happen but at the moment it's quite difficult to find out that information and put it together. That's important because you know, an ordinary person needs to be able to find this information if they want it. Is there something you think should be done now to change the system? We've encouraged the House authorities, the parliamentary authorities, to look at whether there are indicative limits to how much time somebody is putting into their external interests. And I think that would be helpful. Do you think that MPs are doing everything they can to be upfront about how they behave? The vast majority, I think, of MPs work very hard for their constituents, but there are some who don't seem to be keeping that focus. In January, Sky News attempted to answer a simple question who was behind the donations going directly to MPs? It wasn't easy. Uh, is anyone in there? Does anyone work in there? There doesn't seem to be anybody here. Do you think that the rules around donations at the moment are tough enough, particularly with donations that go direct to MPs? No, I don't. And I don't think there is enough information about where money is coming from. I don't think it's easy to identify who is giving money. I think there are still risks of foreign money coming into the political process here. We made a number of recommendations uh, on this. The government have not accepted those. We think that's a, a, a mistake. Uh, we have been assured, and, and this has been said repeatedly by the government, that the rules are strict and rigorous. Uh, that's not our view. The rules are not strict, they are not rigorous, and they are insufficiently transparent. What do you think the danger is? What is going wrong at the moment? Can you spell out where the problem lies and what the solution needs to be? There are two problems. The first problem is lack of uh, real openness. And just to say I have been given money by company X uh, when you can't work out where company X got that money from, who actually controls that company, uh, that's really not a satisfactory way of, uh, of discharging responsibility for openness. Uh, and it's also very important that we can protect the political system from improper influence, whether that's from business interests, whether that's from extreme political interests, or whether that's from foreign powers. And transparency is a really important part of that. And the transparency rules at the moment, in our view, the view of my committee, are not strong enough. One man looms large over the debate about standards in our politics. The former Prime Minister has registered over £3.7 million in extra income just since the turn of the year. Boris Johnson, how much are they paying you? Why aren't you doing this in Parliament? Boris Johnson's behaviour in and out of office has left a mark. Now, there are some in Westminster who think that standards are actually at 
the lowest ebb than they have been for many, many years. Do you agree with that? And, and, and why do you think people think that at the moment? Well, there's been a lot of publicity over the last two or three years on standards issues, some of which you know, have been very disgraceful episodes. Uh, so it's understandable that people are concerned. Which would you say were the worst? I think you know, it started with the Owen Patterson case, where somebody who was clearly breaching uh, parliamentary rules uh, went through due process and there was an attempt to change the rules in the middle of the process. That's not the right way to behave. That can't be the right way to behave in, uh, in public office. Uh, and I think that you know, started a, a series of events and we saw it with Partygate and various other sort of behavioural issues and bullying and all the rest of it. I have to ask this because the common thread between the episodes that you identified is Boris Johnson. Was Boris Johnson bad for standards as Prime Minister? Well, it's not for me to point the finger at particular politicians. What I would say is that in any organisation, the tone from the top and leadership is very important. The way that leaders behave will set a tone that others will follow. His successor entered number 10 with a promise of a new approach. This government will have integrity, professionalism and accountability at every level. That work, it seems, still unfinished. There have been frustrations because we have made what we believe to be appropriate and balanced uh, independent recommendations which government has not taken up and we think that's a mistake. Uh, but nevertheless, the UK public life uh, is supported by the vast majority of people in public life and many, most people go into public life for the right reasons, which is why it's even more important that where there are problems, those are identified, called out and something is done about them. Changes to second job rules, changes to donation rules, changes to APPG rules. There's a lot to do, isn't there, for a Prime Minister if they want to uphold ethical standards? Yeah, there are a lot of things that need to be improved. Uh, this is work which continues. There will always be you know, things that we need to be addressing because the way politics works changes. Uh, but there is certainly a big agenda for change still you know, that we need to address. Last week, the government announced some changes to the system, tweaks but not a major overhaul. That looks too painful this close to an election. Will things ever change? Please join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the TAO Media family. Please like and share TAO Media. We love you all. Please support TAO Media Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.